Have you ever looked at a competition horse and thought to yourself how athletic and amazingly fast they are? Have you ever wondered how much it costs to buy one of the most successful horses in the world? Well, today, in this video, we will be looking at the 10 most expensive horses in the world you probably haven't heard of before, ever. And also in our list, we have a horse that sired over 75 foals. So guys, stick around to the end. Before we continue, press the subscribe button for regular updates. So. Let's start. First on our list is a horse named Jaleel. He was foaled in 2004 and sold as a yearling in 2005 for $9.7 million to the famous Sheikh Mohammed and Godolphin Racing. He was sired by Stormcat, whose grandfather, so to speak, was Northern Dancer, one of the most successful stud horses of all time. His mum, or dame, was a horse called Tranquility Lake a highly successful race-winning horse in her own right. Jaleel raced until 2008 before he was sold to a Chinese stud operation in 2011. This was part of a huge effort to develop the Chinese thoroughbred racing industry. However, by 2013, Jaleel had been sold on again to private owners. Take away the price tag and Jaleel's career earnings weren't too bad, with a total of $327,324 and a handful of professional wins it would normally have been quite respectable. But, put the price tag back into the equation again, and you can see why they call it the sport of kings, or sheiks in this instance. Second up today is a horse called Snafy Dancer. He was actually foaled way back in 1982 and was the first yearling bought at auction for more than $10 million. The purchaser was once again Sheik Muhammad but for his stud at Aston Upthorpe. The price may seem ridiculous for a horse, but this guy was fathered directly by the famous Northern Dancer, a horse you will hear a lot of today. Unfortunately, regardless of his parentage, Snafy Dancer missed out on his father's racing genes. From reports at the time, this guy was nowhere near fast enough on the track. The stable were so concerned at his lack of speed that they never actually raced him. That, in and of itself, would have been bad enough. Acknowledging he would never race, he was instead immediately put out to stud. There again, Snafy Dancer would surprise his new owners. Having sired only four foals, none of which were any more successful than he was, Aston Upthorpe discovered Snafy had fertility issues. It seems at this point Sheikh Mohammed realized Snafy Dancer was not going to be the horse he had hoped he would be. Time to cut his losses and move Snafy Dancer on. The last heard of the horse was that he was living on a farm in Florida. Maidan City is the third horse on the list today. Born in 2005, Maidan City was bought for $11.7 million, sired by King Mambo. He was descended on his mother's side from Nereyev. As Nereyev was one of the greatest thoroughbreds to have lived, you'd expect Maidan City to have performed well as a racehorse. To be fair, he did okay. From eight starts, he won two and was placed in another. So, with a 25% win rate, Maidan City was retired from racing and put out to stud. We don't have much information about his life as a stud, but it appears that his owner Godolphin may have found a winner this time around. Okay. So next up is Seattle Dancer. Born in 1984 and sired by Nijinsky, Seattle Dancer is another grandchild of Northern Dancer. He was bought for the princely sum of $13.1 million in 1985. This time, Sheikh Mohammed and Godolphin were not the buyers. Instead, a consortium that included legendary Irish trainer Vincent O'Brien were successful in their bid for this much sought after thoroughbred. His racing career was not a long one. He raced five times and won two of them. Career earnings were quite respectable at 111,303 pounds considering his lack of races. In 1988, Seattle Dancer retired from racing and went out to stud. From there, he had an active lifestyle, moving from Kentucky to Ireland where he stayed for nine years. In 1997, he moved to stud in Japan before finally moving back to Europe for the final few years of his life. Seattle Dancer was fairly successful, having retired from racing. He sired 37 horses that won a stakes race, including Pike Place Dancer, who would go on to win the Kentucky Oaks. Unfortunately, he would die in a heart attack in 2007 at the young age of only 23. All the horses on our list so far have been racehorses, However, our next horse called Totilus is one of the finest dressage horses ever to have competed. In fact, Totilus held the record for highest dressage score in the Grand Prix freestyle format. Totilus would be ridden competitively by Edward Gow, 
and together they would represent the Netherlands at World and European Championships. So good were they together that they ended up with three Gold World Championship medals and two European. Following on from his success at these events, Totilus was unexpectedly sold by his owners. The fee is unsubstantiated, but believed to be anywhere from 9.5 to 15 million euros. Sadly, it seems life for Totilus from that point on was not a happy one. Allegations of abuse towards his new owners became common. He also suffered a series of injuries and illnesses, causing him to be withdrawn from a number of events. In 2015, Totalis was officially retired from competition and sadly died from a bout of colic in 2020. Quite a sad end for the best dressage horse to have ever competed. Palabet Howlong is the next horse on our list. Again, this chap is not a racehorse, but still managed to sell for an eye-watering fee of $15 million. Born in 2003, Palabet Howlong was a highly impressive show jumper. More than capable of jumping double clear rounds at Grand Prix level, Palabet Howlong became a much sought after horse. He was bought by a chap named Jan Tops as a present for his wife. We'll say that one more time. He was bought as a present for $15 million. Okay. At number four on our list is the Green Monkey. Born in 2004 and sold for a cool $16 million two years later, the Green Monkey was expected to do well in his race career and again at stud once retired from racing. Sired by Forestry, who was descended from Northern Dancer and Secretariat, the Green Monkey only raced three times and never won. As if his racing ability wasn't bad enough, his ability to sire championship-winning horses was not much better either. In total, he managed to produce three top-level event winners. Capping it all off, the Green Monkey had to be euthanized in 2018 due to severe laminitis. At number three is a horse that little is actually known about, Annihilator. So we are led to believe was sold for $19 million. Born in 1999 in Australia, from what we can tell, Annihilator was descended from good stock. Sired by Deheer, a horse that can be traced back to Secretariat, you would expect Annihilator to race well. But, as with many we have listed today, Annihilator seems to have not been able to follow in his predecessor's hoofprints. According to Racing and Sports, Annihilator's record is pretty dismal. Only three wins from 18 starts and career earnings of only 27,800 AU dollars. Not much return on $19 million there. Sharif Dancer is the second most expensive horse on our list today. Born in 1980 and sired directly by Northern Dancer, Sharif Dancer was sold for $40 million in 1983. He raced five times, winning three, including an impressive victory in the Group 1 rated Irish Derby stakes. That said, career earnings of $246,463 certainly helped to pay the food bills. He was far more successful at stud, managing to sire at least six champion winning horses before he died in 1999. Our final horse today is Fusaichi Pegasus. Born in 1997, Fusaichi Pegasus was a very successful racehorse, winning the Kentucky Derby in 2000. He would go on to win six races from nine starts, before being sold for a fee believed to be an excess of $60 million. Although he sired over 75 stakes-winning horses worldwide, none were particularly brilliant. He was finally retired from all official duties in 2020 to live out the rest of his life. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching as always, and don't forget to hit the bell to make sure you don't miss our next exciting and informative video. We'll see you then.